Okay, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. This is my channel, Novel Serendipity, and today is release day. It is release day for Scions, a star-crossed novel prequel by Josephine Angelini. So... I am here to talk to you about this book and the other three books in the initial trilogy. But first and foremost, this is Science. Today is release day and it is Starcross lover story. So if that interests you, this is the book for you. Starcross, Greek mythology, so on and so forth. This video is going to be kind of a double, triple. I am going to be talking about Science. I'm going to be talking about the initial Starcross trilogy and it is going to be mostly a voiceover of me making my own dreamscape inspired by the second book in the main trilogy, Dreamless. If you have never heard of Starcross before, this is the cover of Starcross. This one's really shiny. It's like holographic. I love it. Here we are. So this one is I think Josie's first trilogy and it is relatively older. Please hold. 2011. That's the year I graduated high school. So it's like, what, 11 years old now? So um, yes, a little bit older, YA, fantasy, mythology filled, and it's just, it's fantastic. But here we go. I am going to now start off making my dreamscape and I'm going to be showing it to you while giving you a little voiceover. So because this video is initially for Scions, because it's release day and this is just a fun video I wanted to do, let's talk about Scions first. So here we go. So we have enemies to lovers, very much enemies to lovers, whether or not they like it or not, they are thrusted into those molds right off the bat. Greek mythology, these follow like descendants or like demigods from the original mythology individuals we all know, love, despise, familiar with, you know? Demigods, so yes, descendants, uh, children of children of children of children of children of children of these Greek gods and goddesses. Uh, swoony romance, so you fall in love with these characters right away and if you have read the original trilogy, you know a few of the characters already or you know of them, you get more background, you get more information, you get the history, you get a, some gaps kind of filled um, that aren't really filled in the main trilogy. There is a curse that not even the gods can break, so these individuals, these demigods, they are fated to live a certain life. They are fated to play a role and their lives are just, they're decided for them basically. That's the whole aspect that these individuals that we start to just absolutely adore are dealing with. It's a young adult fantasy. There's a powerful female lead. So we see this female lead in the original trilogy. She is not one of my favorites, but during Scions, I understand her a lot better now. I don't hate her quite as much. Um, I loved getting another perspective of this character, and it's just, it's fantastic. And then, of course, the star-crossed lovers um, that I spoke of earlier. That's the whole concept of this book, is star-crossed lovers and enemies to lovers, and those two things weaved throughout each other. You wouldn't think the enemies to lovers and star-crossed lovers would really work, but it does the way Josie does it, and it's super special. So like I was saying, Scions is a prequel to the Starcross series. It is set in 1993. So it was Daphne's choice, which is Helen's mother from the original trilogy. You don't have to read the trilogy before you read Scions because it is a prequel. You can read them in either order and you'll be just fine. And Daphne is kind of, she's kind of thrusted into the heart of a struggle that has been secretly waging for 3,300 years, but not much in her life has been up to her. Um, and you see that is a trend with these characters. Daphne is actually a descendant of Helen, Helen of Troy. So you kind of see where this is going. Um, and she is basically fated for blood to be shed over her yet again. So men are fated to kill her, but New York in 1993, it holds a special surprise for Daphne. 
and her very, very cursed face. So, at the very beginning of this book, she is running into these beautiful murals painted all across the city, and she is out to solve this mystery. So, she wants to understand, there's a reason she keeps running across these murals, why they mean so much to her, and she meets the artist, a son of Apollo. So he turns out to be Daphne's mortal enemy. They, they are from different houses. Part of the curse is basically that they hate each other on sight. So if you are from enemy houses, you hate each other on sight. And the fates, the furies, the furies start screaming in your head and kind of take over your body and your mind and just pretty much just you. So you go into this like murderous rampage to basically fulfill a centuries old blood debt and you want to kill everyone that isn't from the same house as yourself. This book follows how Daphne and her mural painting enemy break the cycle of destruction that was set in motion by their ancestors. They become yet another pair of star-crossed lovers because they are from different houses and they're cursed and they are doomed to repeat the same fatal mistakes again and again. So that's a little bit about science. It's absolutely amazing and I recommend it to anyone who loves enemies to lovers fantasy, Greek mythology, an all-around well-written story. As I was saying, this book is a prequel to the original Starcross series. In the original Starcross series that came out in 2011, it follows Daphne's daughter Helen. So she, Daphne decided to name her Helen, knowing that her daughter would have be cursed with the face of Helen of Troy. It was a very interesting choice. But Helen has spent her entire 16 years trying to hide how different she is. No, no easy task on an island as small and sheltered as Nantucket. And it's getting even harder. Nightmares, you see where I kind of start to get the inspiration from my dreamscape. Nightmares of a desperate desert journey. These nightmares have Helen waking parched only to find her sheets damaged by dirt and dust. At school, she's haunted by hallucinations of three women weeping tears of blood. And when Helen first crosses paths with Lucas, she has no way of knowing they're destined to play the leading roles in a tragedy the fates insist on repeating throughout history. As Helen unlocks the secrets of her ancestry, she realizes that some myths are more than just legend. But even demigod powers might not be enough to defy the forces that are drawing her and Lucas together and trying to tear them apart. So these books, they are, um, they can get pretty dark, um, pretty sad, yet inspiring, hopeful, lighthearted, yet, you know, almost obnoxiously challenging for the characters. I found myself emotional. There was always a mystery to try to figure out. It's adventurous, even if it's in the underworld. It gets a little tense. And I love the pacing of both of these books. I loved the stories. I love how Scions takes the same story we know from Helen and Starcross and gives us a new set of characters to follow and see how they handle the struggles of the curse and the cursed face. I also asked Josie a little bit about her reasoning or why she used dreams as a tool in her book. Dreams have always been really important to her as a person, as an author. She's a lucid dreamer, which I think is really cool. Sometimes I wish I was a lucid dreamer, but part of me also thinks that it might creep me out. <laughs> so she finds a lot of creativity in her dreams and it's more of you know, it's more of an exploration place for her than a writing place. She very rarely writes what she experiences in dreams, which I find really, really interesting. I recently started writing a book and I actually got the inspiration from it from a dream. So I'm kind of opposite from just see herself in this aspect, but I took what little I remembered of the dream and I just started kind of branching off and building off of that. She uses dreams as a tool in Starcross, but she uses it as basically a plot point in Dreamless and then more of 
a recall tool for Helen in the final book of the trilogy Goddess. So she uses dreams and dreaming and that tool in a few different ways and I just find it really unique. I love when dreams are a huge aspect of a book. It's just one of my favorite things to read about, especially in my fantasies. If dreams or dreaming or anything like it is part of the story, I'm automatically hooked. I'm automatically going to buy the book and that might be, maybe I'm biased, might be a reason I love this series so much. Here is the rest of my dreamscape and yeah, I'll check in with you at the end when the dreamscape is finished.
Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed watching me make my dreamscape. I hope you pick up one or both of these books because they are absolutely amazing. And yes, I put my dreamscape right on my Josephine Angelini shelf right in between Dreamless and Goddess, the second and third book in the original trilogy. And yeah, so this is it. This is the video. This is the video for the release day my little promotional shout out of Scion's Josephine Angelini's new book. So I will link all the links down below for Josie's social medias. If these interest you even slightly, buy the book, rent it from your library, just delve into the world. It really is a journey. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all next time. All love. Bye.